Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah Ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حيا رسول حيا رسول حيّر الفراخ خيّر الفراخ الله أكبر الله أكبر لا We seek God's protection against the influences of the shaitan who has been rejected and outcast. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. With Allah's name, our merciful benefactor and our most merciful redeemer. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. The praise is for God, who is the Lord of all the worlds and all systems of knowledge. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ahduhu la sharika lahu wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa barik we give open testimony that there is only one god who stands alone without any partners or associates <coughs> and it is he alone who deserves our worship we further give open testimony that Muhammad the prophet to whom the Quran is revealed is Allah's messenger, his slave servant, and he is the seal of the prophets. We pray the prayers of peace be upon Muhammad the prophet and all of those righteous servants that follow him and all else that follows this excellent greeting. Dear believers, I greet you. As-salamu alaykum. wa Juma Mubarak. Blessed day of Juma. I pray that God will guide my speech and my tongue, that he prevents me from errors and mistakes. I acknowledge before I begin that any that I make of my own, I humbly ask his forgiveness for those in advance. And I acknowledge before I begin that any good that comes from this talk is not from me, it is from him alone. And so I say, Alhamdulillah, 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 Rabbil Alameen, all the praises for God. All of the praise belongs to God. All of the praise belongs to God, who is the Lord of all of the worlds and all systems of knowledge. Dear believers in the one God, as I begin, I advise you as I advise myself first, that the most important thing that you're ever going to do, that we're ever going to do in this life, is to believe in God. Believe in the creator of all things that exist and thereafter believing have what we refer to as taqwa, a conscious regardfulness of him, a conscious regard for God that prevents us from making the errors or mistakes that we sometimes make in this life that cause stain on our souls and prevents us from the best rewards in this life and may keep us from the best rewards in the hereafter. We're grateful to God for another blessed day of, of Salat al Jumu'ah, despite the fact that we are separated and can't be uh, congregated together um, at the masjid or in houses of worship, that we are separated in our homes. 
We thank God still for this blessed day of Juma, this day of coming together. Um, this day of Juma is not only about, only about the ritual of retreating to the masjid and uh, listening to the kubba, uh, the talk from the imam, and then making the salat. It's not only about that, as we know, God has made provisions for us that if we're not able to make the Salat of Jumu'ah, that we could make the Dhur prayer, the noon, day, the midday prayer that we normally would be making at this day, this time and different uh, times of the week. So that we know that this isn't only about coming and making prayer only. That this day of Jumu'ah is actually a prescription that is given to us by our Lord to help us be successful in this life and to be successful in the hereafter. I've mentioned in the last few weeks, a few weeks ago, about this day of Juma being a prescription from God and how God recognizes that men, women, people suffer from this disease, if you will, of forgetfulness we forget our responsibility to our Lord, our Creator. We forget our responsibility to our own selves and our own souls. And so this day of Juma is prescribed uh, on one hand to help remind us that we do have this obligation to God and we have a real obligation to our own souls. This day of Salatul Juma is also a prescription to help us remember that nothing that we accomplish in this life, we accomplish on our own. We accomplish it only through the help and through the guidance and the assistance of our Lord. This day of Juma is intended to help remind us that even those who not only excel um, in business and trade and, and worldly matters that none of us would even be able to remain conscious of God without his help. So we stop whatever we're doing on this day and we reflect on the reality and the only sure reality is God. We reflect on that reality of God, we reflect on the realities that we could not be where we are in his life without him. We reflect on our shortcomings and our failings over the past week, and we position ourselves to seek his forgiveness and his mercy. In fact, we repent for those things that we have done uh, in, in injustice to our own souls. And we ask for his forgiveness and his mercy. And we begin striving again to be pleasing to him. We forget sometimes that we can't find our own way, so we need God's help. In fact, when we pray daily, we pray Surah Al-Fatiha as part of all of our prayers and in Surah Al-Fatiha we pray and we ask Allah Ithnina Sirat Al-Mustaqim guide us to the path that is straight or put us direct our feet if you will on your guided path we ask for his guidance and so we're grateful to God we're grateful to Allah the creator of all things, that he hears our calls, he listens to us, and then he gives us guidance and help that he intends for us also to listen to, which makes sense. Why would you ask for God for guidance and he give it to you and you don't find you don't follow it? So we find that in the Quran, this book that God revealed to us through Muhammad the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may the peace of God be upon him, we find that God 
through this revelation answers the prayers of all of those who just said immediately in the next surah he says Bismillahirrahmanirrahim with God's name or with God's help God's permission <laughs> with God's help uh, the most merciful benefactor the most merciful redeemer Alif Lam Meem Dalikal Kitabu Araiba Fihu Dil Mutaki This is the book and it is guidance sure without doubt for those who remain conscious and regardful of God. He says those who believe in the unseen, who are steadfast in prayers, and spin out of what we have provided for them, and who believe in this revelation that has been given to, to you, and the revelations that came before your time and in their hearts have an assurance of the hereafter. He says, they are the ones that are on true guidance from their Lord and is these who will prosper. God says further, and, and subhanAllah, let me stop. This was Surah to Al Baqarah, and um, these were the ayats. One through five. And before that, Surah Al Fatiha, Idina Sarat Al Mustaqim, ayat six. I'm doing that because I have a tendency of re referencing Quran without giving the uh, ayats or places that I get them from. And some people have uh, sent me messages trying to find out where I was reading. So I want to start trying to, if not during the kutbah, give you the ayats or uh, reference points. Or at least I'll type it in the reference underneath the, the video uh, in the future. And if I don't, and you need it, please let me know. But God then also says in Surah 11, He says, Alif Lam Ra. This is the book with verses that are basic and fundamental of established meaning, further explained in detail from one who is wise and well acquainted with all things. This book teaches you that you should worship none but Allah, the God, the creator of all things. He says, this book says, so you should say verily, I, have been sent unto you from him to warn you and to bring you glad tidings. And you are to preach this. Seek the forgiveness of your Lord and turn to him in repentance that he may grant you enjoyment, good and true for a term appointed and then bestow his abounding grace on all who abound in merit. But if you turn away, then I fear for you the penalty of the great day. To Allah is your return and he has power over all things. God says, then back to Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat 285. The messenger believes in what has been revealed to him from his Lord, as do the men of faith. 
Each one of them believes in Allah, his angels, his books, his messengers, and we make no distinction, they say, between one or another of God's messengers. And they say we hear and we obey. We seek thy forgiveness, our Lord, and to thee is the end of all journeys. On no soul does Allah place a, a burden greater than it can bear. It gets every good that it earns, and it suffers every ill that it earns. So pray, our Lord, condemn us, not if we fought, forget or fall into error. Our Lord, lay not on us a burden like thou did, on those who came before us. Our Lord, lay not on us a burden greater than we have the strength to bear. Blot out our sins, grant us forgiveness, have mercy upon us, for thou art the protector, and help us against those who stand against faith. And surely God speaks the truth. Dear believers, we thank Almighty God for the blessing of this book that gives guidance that, that gives direction that gives insight into how we can be successful in this life and it's spelled out so beautifully for us God says of this book that he has left absolutely nothing out in it it, it, it intrigues me that so many people think that God's word needs help, but it doesn't. It does not. What God says is sufficient. And if for some reason you turn to what God has given you and you don't find it sufficient, then there is a deficiency in your understanding, your insight, and your reasoning. So you should turn to God and ask him to increase you in sincerity that he blesses you to purify your hearts and your intentions so that he opens up the book for you and that he will bless you to come to the best understanding so that you can have the best chance to be the man or the woman that he created you to be. And we pray our Lord, forgive us again if we forget or fall into error. Grant us protection against our own shortcomings and faults. Help us to be amongst those that study your book as it should be studied and reward us with insights to implement into our daily lives so we can be the men and women you intend for us to be. Cause us to strive as we ought to strive and reward us for our striving both in this life as well as in the hereafter, and save us far from the torment of the fire. Amen. Alhamdulillah, 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 rabbil alameen. Dear believers, in the second part of my talk today, I wanted to acknowledge that we are moving upon the beginning of the month of Ramadan. We thank Allah again for his many countless blessings. God has prescribed for us, I said in the first part of the Kukbah, Salatul Jumah. But God has also prescribed for us fasting. And he tells us that fasting helps us to sharpen or rediscover or to learn for the first time obedience to God. And God says that whoever is present in his home during the month of Ramadan should spend it in fasting. And I encourage us all since we are at home to spend this month fasting. And even for those who are first responders and folks who are still having to work, 
spend this month fasting. For Allah says that fasting is beneficial for you if you really only understood. And for those who can't fast, there are exceptions. And certainly you can take those exceptions if you need, but God says fasting would be better for you if you only understood. Ramadan is often referred to as the month of the Quran. And alhamdulillah for that. Because we should spend a great deal of time during the month of Ramadan focusing our attentions to reading and studying, reciting, and even memorizing Quran. But I want to add that Ramadan should not be the only month of Quran for us as Muslims. Quran should be a part of our everyday meal. Just as important to your physical body, it is for you to have water daily, for you to have food daily. Your soul needs to have Quran daily. Or should I say our souls need to have Quran daily. It should not only be during the month of Ramadan that we read and study the Quran. But praise be to Allah, praise be to God that many people will spend this month in Quran. I think it's a disservice and this is just me thinking you can take it or leave it. It is a disservice to yourself to speed read through the Quran so that you can say and boast at the end of the month that you completed the whole of the book. It's a disservice to your own soul. What would be better, again, in my opinion, just me thinking, is that you take your time with Quran and you study it intensely and you earnestly pray to Allah God that he opens up every ayat that you read for you so that you come to a better understanding that you had before you entered this month and that you find in it practical understanding that's applicable, that you can apply to your daily life so that it becomes transformational for you. So that when you leave this month, you will never again be the person you were before you entered this month. It's just me. I think that we should strive to get the most out of the reading of Quran. I think that also, I wanted to mention that this month of Ramadan is to be what I just mentioned, a transformational time for us. It is a time for us to move closer towards or return back to the person that God intends for us to be. And so Ramadan is, is not just a time for reading Quran, but it is a time for purifying ourselves. It's a month of purity. You know that fasting purifies your body, right? That when you fast, when you abstain from food and drink, it gives your body the opportunity to run its processes, to digest your food, food, excuse me, to remove um, uh, impurities and et cetera, et cetera, from your body so that your body uh, becomes purified. Well, fasting, likewise, is a time when we should also be working to remove the toxins and impurities from our thinking, from our hearts, from our disposition 
that we should be sheltering ourselves from taking in things that are harmful for us, and not just in terms of physical food, but in terms of the, what we get from news media, what we get from television in general, what we get from entertainment, what we get from music, what we get from gossip, what we get from whatever it is in this environment that we're taking in, because you don't only take things in through your mouth, through eating, you take things in from listening to your ears, you take things in from what you allow yourself to see, you take things in from what you allow to be programming your minds. What things you allow your hearts and your desires to get caught up in, man, this is a time to fast from those things. and purify ourselves. And God says in the Quran, by the soul, by the soul and the order and proportion given to it, and its enlightenment as to his wrong and its right. Truly he succeeds that purifies the soul and he fails that corrupts it. This is Surah Al Shams, Ayat 7, 8, and 9, and 10. God tells us that our soul has been given proportion and order and it has been enlightened to what's wrong and it's right. You know, this goes to this idea that people have to be taught what's right and what's wrong, and that's simply untrue. God has already factored something into our DNA, in our soul, that has a, the ability to, to discern what's right or what's wrong. It's instinctive in our nature to know. And when we do things that are right and what's wrong, we know it. We feel good when we do good, and we feel some kind of way when we do bad. God says, surely those are successful that purifies this soul. keeps those that keep their soul in, well, let's say those who continuously are striving to keep their souls purified. And I take I say it that way because uh, nobody keeps their soul pure 100% all the time. The shaitan is always, Satan is always whispering and making suggestions to us and God says that man has no firm resolve. <laughs> so we resolve to do what's right. And we eventually sometimes find ourselves going, Walid Darlene. We slowly, gradually slipping off of God's guided path, leading ourselves into ruin. So we pray that God keeps us from being the Walid Darlene because most people are. So God says for the people who are constantly purifying their souls, working on their soul, it's a continuous work to purify and keep our souls in a state of purification. Those people, God says, are the ones who are successful. And those that allow their souls to go into ruin or become corrupt, they are the losers. Ramadan is a time, dear believers, for us to purify our souls. So I'm praying that we spend this time doing just that. These next 30 days that are to come should be spent focusing more on how we can be more pleasing to our Lord and not just thinking about it, practicing it. 
Let these 30 days be transformational for us. Let us practice abstaining from lewd talk and behavior. Let us practice containing our anger. Let us practice uh, staying away from gossip and idle talk. Let us practice keeping out the food, not just physical food, but all the other foods that we take in, because they say you are what you eat, right? So that means you are what you listen to. If you, you know, and you know, I don't want to get sidetracked, but you do know that um, people who decide what television programs come on television are called television programmers. And the fact that they call them programs mean that <laughs> the, the content is intended to program your mind. And radio uh, disc jockeys, not the people who necessarily play the music, but the people who decide what music gets played are called radio programmers or program directors. They direct the programming that is uh, uh, given to the people. And we listen and we are being programmed. And you could be a good God conscious, God loving person, but if you listen to a whole bunch of too short all day, your 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 uh, they say you, your frequency may change. If you listen, to, I don't want to go through a whole. You understand the point that I'm trying to make when you're not when you're programming your stuff yourself with food that is not conducive for you being the men and women that God intended for us to be, then you find yourself at some point becoming more like that which you have programmed yourself to be. So we should be programming ourselves with God's words during this month. Focus on that. Spend as much time as you can digesting God's words and let it transform you. Let it shape you. Let it build you. Let it create the mind that God intended for us to have. So that again, as I said a week or so ago before, we could be like Christ Jesus and we could be like Muhammad the prophet where we, when asked, can say everything I say and do has been instructed by the one who sent me the one that created me. That's who we want to be, right? So we want to spend this time purifying ourselves. And I want to place that emphasis. And, 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 and why is that so important outside of the things that I mentioned? Because earlier I was talking about the Quran and how beneficial the Quran is, right? And I was talking about... <laughs> How important it is not to just read the Quran, speed through, speak, but to spend some time with the Quran and, and, and asking and praying sincerely that God will open it up for you and me. But Allah tells us in the Quran that one of the conditions for you to be able to open it up or for it to open up to you is that you be purified. Only the purified ones can touch the book. So the conditioning of ourselves, the purification of our souls, our thinking, our heart, are all prerequisites for us to be able to get the benefit from the Quran. So let's do all we can to get the most out of this month of Ramadan, dear believers. I pray that we have a fruitful and successful Ramadan. May Allah increase us in sincerity. May he increase us in knowledge. May he purify us, help us to work, to purify our hearts, our souls, our intention, and strengthen our resolve 
to be the men and women he intends for us to be uh, during this month. And may he bring us closer to the Quran and develop uh, in us a love for the Quran and that we leave the month of Ramadan transformed, inshallah. Our Lord, forgive us if we forget or fall in the error. Grant us protection against our shortcomings and faults. Help us to keep our feet firmly on the straight path. Cause us to strive as we should strive and reward us for our striving this life as well as in the hereafter and save us from the torment of the fire. Amen. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.